Hi, I'm Michael Lovechurch from Cardstock Warriors, and today we're going to take a look at the Witch Army. Um, so, as you can see before you, uh, I've got the Witch Army laid out, printed, cut, and put together. And this is my prototype army, so there's quite a few of them here. Uh, what we're going to do is walk through the individual abilities that you get at an army level first, and then we'll walk through each individual troop and talk about what they do in the game. Um, so first of all, every army gets their base abilities when they start the game. Uh, so at a standard point level, uh, the Witch Army is going to get the following abilities. They'll get two uses of Dispel Magic, and the way that works is a reaction when an opponent casts a spell that has the magic keyword or uses an ability with the magic keyword, you can use this Dispel Magic to negate that one activity uh, of the spell. They can do that twice. Uh, they have two Bound Spell. Uh, this is a magic ability. You'll choose one of your Witch units, uh, and that unit can then cast an additional spell, uh, which is probably a total of two for that unit this turn because they get one automatically. Uh, and then it is a different spell than the one they've already cast. Uh, that witch then does not have to roll to see if it's successfully cast it, automatically cast. We'll talk more about witches and the way that they cast their magic later in the video. And then the last ability that they get, they get two uses of spooky stuff. Now what spooky stuff does is it just kind of um, brings to bear the scariness in general of the witch forces and allows you to lower your opponent's command value by two. So when you're up against a um, pretty nasty enemy, if you want to lower their command value so that they're not uh, going to hit you as much in close combat or to add to your own benefit, uh, or alternatively if you've got some kind of ability that targets their command, you may want to soften them up with some spooky stuff first. So those are the basic abilities. In addition to that, at the beginning of the game, you also get to purchase some abilities at the army level um, to d different point values. A couple options that you've got um, is raise zombies. So raise zombies basically caches up one of your zombie units. It allows you to raise within 10 inches of a dark magic unit uh, 2d6 worth wounds of zombies. Uh, it is a magic spell, so it can be dispelled. Uh, raise skeletons. Same thing, but with skeletons, that's 2d6 skeletons, um, and it can be dispelled. It is a little harder to dispel than normal, so an attempt to dispel uh, on this one, uh, as well as the raised zombies, you have to actually roll uh, a d6, and it reduces the amount of raised guys. So it can't be totally dispelled, but it can be mitigated. Uh, dead relatives. So in this case, uh, your opponent sees some of their relatives in the unit that they're fighting, uh, which clearly is going to demoralize them, freak them out. They're not going to want to uh, do any fighting there. Um, so that reduces their defense by one as the individuals stare in awe and find themselves incapable of actually fighting. Horrify, which is another ability that kind of, you know, gets the zeitgeist of the scariness of the witch army. Uh, that allows you to exchange your normal strike value uh, for the ability to strike three against their command. So that one combos really well with spooky stuff. You lower their command, you do Horrify, those two together, you're able to get some really tough armored targets with low command values and really kind of cut through their armor. Um, fog, this is a good one if you're up against a ranged army that's got a lot of uh, output there. Uh, until the beginning of your next turn, all ranges are halved, so that really allows you to uh, kind of fog up the battlefield and get your guys forward before you take a lot of damage. Uh, and then you've got some of your standard ones, Weapon of Power, Weapon of Fury. If you've seen the other videos, it's very similar. Uh, weapon of Power, add plus one to your strike, makes you hit harder. And then Weapon of Fury, add an additional three strike, makes you hit more often. Um, and so those are the basic army abilities that you can purchase for the Witch Army. Now what we'll do is get in close on these units and talk about what each one of them does. All right, so the first unit we're going to talk about here is our Skeleton Spear unit. Uh, this is your standard infantry. Uh, they've got a decent strike value because they're armed with spears. Uh, decent defense, low command, okay move. Uh, they do have distressed uh, values that kind of lower all that down. They have two abilities. One is called Instill Fear. Uh, when they win combat, they can immediately reduce the command value of all opponent units involved by two to a minimum of zero. And that lasts until the rest of the game. So every time they win combat, they're lowering the, the unit's uh, command until it gets to zero and, until they can finish it off. Uh, the next one is called Put Me Back Together. This is a beginning of turn ability. This one uh, only takes place when, when you're within six inches of a unit that emanates dark magic. And those are going to be witches, vampires, the like. 
uh, something that is actually able to command the undead. They have a dark magic ability. Uh, if they're within six inches of that, they'll add D3 wounds back at the beginning of every turn up to their maximum of 20. So you'll never go above your max value, but you'll slowly heal as time goes on. Next up is the Zombie Horde. Zombie Horde, uh, also, uh, they have a lower strike value, lower defense, no command than the Skeleton Spears. They're also a little bit cheaper, uh, quite a bit cheaper, in fact. Uh, so those guys are, are going to be your cannon fodder. Uh, they do have instill fear, so if they do manage to win a combat, they will reduce the enemy's uh, command. Uh, don't let them touch you is a static ability. At the end of the turn, they can add back the number of wounds that they dealt up to a maximum number of 20. So these guys, if they get into combat and they kill three people, at the end of the turn, they're gonna get three more wound tokens back. So they are converting other people to zombies. They are relentless, meaning they never get distressed. So one zombie is as deadly as 20 zombies. Uh, and deadly is a relative term there because they really don't hit that hard. Uh, and finally, they have dark energy. So if they're within six inches of a dark magic unit, then they get plus one to their defense. So the closer they are to the magic that is animating them, the harder they are to kill. Next up, we have the Revenant Kings. That's these guys back here. Uh, those guys have good strike, good defense, uh, decent uh, move. They do have instill fear. Uh, they have put me back together, uh, but they get D3 wounds back up to a maximum of 20 when they're within six of a dark magic unit. So you're going to want to keep them there. Uh, they also have blades of undeath, which means any roll of a six that they get is going to actually count as two rolls. So if they strike four and one of those is a six, then that will count as two wounds. It will instantly kill a mounted unit or it will kill two uh, enemy wound tokens. So those guys can hit pretty hard, deceptively so. Next up we have our witches. Um, so we got a couple witches scattered throughout, uh, as you can see. Uh, that's really a good way to, to keep them. You want to keep your dark magic zone kind of spread out as you, as you play. Uh, they have low strike, decent defense of five. Um, they are in loose formation, which means they don't get distressed. They do emanate dark magic, so they have that special rule. And they have Command the Dead. So Command the Dead, if there is an unengaged friendly unit within four inches of them that is a valid target for any action, then they, uh, Witch Coven can force that action upon that unit. So what that means is that they're targeted by arrows. They can redirect those arrows to a close by undead unit. If they're targeted by an engagement move, they can redirect that engagement move to a close by enemy. So it kind of keeps them protected as long as they're within a, sea, within a sea of the undead. They can magically animate those guys to jump in the way of any kind of danger. And lastly, they have uh, really their, their cornerstone ability, which I call witchification. Uh, it happens in the ability phase, and this is their magic. So they'll roll a d6, and on a 3+, plus, they choose one of the following four abilities to use. Uh, evil speed, which targets a friendly unit within 10 inches and moves them 5 inches. That can be an engage move, and a unit can only be affected by that once per turn. So if you're not quite close enough to get in, you can use evil speed to really push your guys up into combat. And then they were more, target a friendly unit within 10, activate a dark magic ability on that unit. That really goes well with skeletons and uh, revenant kings. It allows them to proc that dark magic ability twice, so they may get d3 wounds back at the beginning of the turn. And then if a witch is close by, they may activate it again in the ability phase and get another d3 wounds back. So that one's pretty good. Dark Energy, which is your standard uh, ultimate power or lightning bolts there. Uh, target unengaged enemy unit in your front quadrant. That's within 15 inches uh, and that you can see. Witch Coven strikes 2d6 times against that unit. So you'll roll 2d6. If that's a 2, you strike 2. If it's a 12, you strike 12. So that could be really, really strong. And Coven Circle. This one is your ultimate ability. If you have at least two other witch units on the table, that have not already participated in a coven circle. You can draw lines between all three of their bases, make a big triangle or circle, uh, and you'll roll 2d6. You can strike that many times against every single enemy unit you have completely within the circle. So if you can get your witches spread out along the table and activate that, that's really a way to, to close some stuff down in late game. So that is the witches. Uh, those abilities are magic abilities, so they can be dispelled. Next up, we have the vampire. I've only got one here in my prototype army. He's in the back. This guy's cool. He's got a pretty high strike value of 7 by himself. Defense is 6. He's really tough. Uh, move 10, so he's very fast. Uh, he does have distress value, so as you start to hurt him, he gets a little worse, but not a ton. He has instill fear, and he does emanate dark magic. 
the rest of his abilities are the unique ones, so hunger. Uh, if he has a legal engagement move, he's got to engage. This dude wants to drink some blood. Uh, if he has multiple legal targets, he can choose which one to engage, but he's got to get in there if he can. Unreasonable strength, which means he has plus one to his strike rolls, so he's really cutting through armor. And then he has blood power. So this is a reaction ability upon dealing a wound once per turn. So after he kills someone, deals a wound, whatever you want to call it, he can activate one of these abilities. That's missed, which means he cannot be targeted by strike rolls caused by combat resolution. Uh, this lasts until the beginning of turn phase. So if he's outnumbered 30 to 1, he's going to do his damage, and then he's going to miss out, and they're not going to be able to strike him with their vast numbers. Uh, unearthly speed. The next time he strikes, he gets to add 3 to his strike value. So if he's going to be in a prolonged combat, that one's pretty good. Insane power. The next time he strikes, he gets to add an additional plus 1 to his strike rolls. So that's plus 2 to strike rolls. If he's like, against a really heavily armored target, that's a good power. And then form of bat, which increases his movement speed to 20, and he may disengage from combat if he chooses at the end of the round. Uh, he will still suffer normal disengagement, but it lets him kind of get in with his hunger, strike, get his ability, and then bat form out of there uh, if he's in a bad position and kind of and reposition himself. So he's pretty cool. Next up, you got your Dark Knights. Uh, that's these guys right here. Uh, those are mostly like your your foot guys, except for they're they're on uh, horses, undead horses. So your revenant knights over here and your your dark knights over here, same same kind of thing. Uh, they have strike six, defense six, hard to kill. Um, they do have a distress value, so that does lower them if they get wounded. They have instill fear. They have blades of undeath. That's the same ability we talked about earlier. Six is count as double. They are mounted, which halves all incoming wounds dealt to their unit rounding down. So you've got to deal two wounds to kill one guy. And they have Crippling Charge, which gives them plus two to their strike rolls in the first round of combat. These guys hit like a truck. They stay in the game. They're hard to kill. Um, so they're, they're a pretty powerful unit, uh, and they're pointed as such. Next, we have Death Hosts. These guys are pretty cool. Uh, they have Strike 8, uh, Move 12. They're pretty fast. They do have a Distress value if they start to lose power. Uh, they do have Instill Fear as well. But they have Spectral Attacks, which gives them plus one to their strike rolls. They're kind of striking through the enemy, doing, doing some work there against armored targets. Uh, they are Spectral, which means they can move through all terrain, obstacles, and units as if they were not present. So you can run them straight through an enemy unit if you want to, or a friendly unit. And they are Hungry for Souls. So every time they wound on the roll of a natural six, not a modified six, so just because they have plus bonuses to their strike rolls, can't be a five. It's got to be a natural six. They collect the soul of the enemy soldier and can place an additional ghost token on their base immediately, up to their maximum of 10 wounds. So if they're at full power, that's not going to work. But once they've started getting hit, they can rejuvenate those wounds. And they have a really cool thing. It's a gamble mechanic. So in the combat phase, they have something called expend soul. You can remove as many ghost tokens as you want and add that number of strikes to your strike roll. So you got nine ghost tokens and one death token. So death can eat up nine souls and strike a whole bunch of times in one combat. If you've really got that critical combat, you want to bet the farm on it, that's what you want to do. Next, we got bats back here in the back. These guys are pretty cool. They're fast moving. They get behind enemy lines. Uh, their move is 20. They have a decent strike. They can fly, so they uh, ignore terrain, and they can always move their full movement and uh, change their facing 180 degrees. They got some cool abilities there. Massive jaws, plus one bonus on their strike rolls. They won't die. So they've been animated with powerful dark magic. Uh, what that does for them is their wounds close themselves. So every time they get hit, you get to roll a d6 before that actually goes through. And on a 5 plus, the wound does not occur. So that's pretty nice. And then they have sonar, which is cool. They do not need an uninterrupted line uh, of sight to engage an enemy unit. So as long as the target is within their front quadrant they, and within their move, they can engage. So they can actually hang out behind your whole army using their sonar, identify an enemy target, and just fly in there and get them. Uh, so those are really awesome. And then last, I've got some prototype dragon, uh, which zombie dragon guys printed out over here. Dragon mounted witch, skeletal dragon, whatever you want to call it. That's these guys in the back. Um, they have all of the same dark magic spells uh, as a normal witch. They emanate dark magic, just like a normal witch. They do have incredible strength, which adds plus two to strike rolls in close combat. That'll be your dragon. Uh, why won't you just die every time you take a wound on a 4+, plus? you ignore it. It's really hard to kill. It does have flight, it does have instill fear, 
and he strikes eight times and has a defense of six. So that dragon is really, really tough to take down. So she can do a lot of uh, magic power damage. She can do a lot of damage in combat. And that is an overview of your witch army. Next, we'll take a look at what does it look like at 350 points, which is your average game. All right, so what we're looking at here is a 350 point selection for the witch armies. Um, what I've got selected here is a fairly good core of infantry. I've got some skeletons and zombies. Uh, I've selected two witches and a vampire for my dark magic. Typically for the witch coven ability, you do need three witches, um, but I usually wait until much larger point values when I can bring in a dragon or something like that to get that third point uh, way out there. Um, I've got some of these uh, death hosts here because they can get forward fast. They can soak up a lot of damage and regenerate. They're pretty strong. And same with uh, these guys back here, hard to kill. So those are going to be my flanking forces. And then I've got this bat. The bats I'll probably send way into the back of the enemy line, take out some war machines, try and uh, harass their shooters, that type thing. Uh, and then I'll, I'll send these guys through some terrain if I've got any uh, on the table. I'll send these guys around the edge to, to draw some attention. And then I'll just march my troops up the center, try and get them in good positions. Once we're about to hit the line, I'll try and support with the vampire. And I've got these skeletons back here in the back. Those are representing the skeletons that I've got through my card, uh, which is going to raise uh, skeletons. And I'll use some dark magic to put those behind enemy lines as soon as I can. And uh, really kind of try and get uh, that flanking action, reduce the enemy's command to zero, uh, win some combats, and then reduce that thing permanently. And then I'll reposition and try and do some more work that way. Uh, so this is a typical 350 point army. Uh, you know, my card selection here, obviously I've chosen one card, which is going to give me the extra unit of skeletons. I'll probably choose some of the uh, spooky stuff and horrors that's going to reduce their um, their command values and let me hit against the command values. Uh, what I don't really have is some sustained heavy hitting. Uh, the vampire can do so once he takes some wounds. These guys can do so on their first charge. But if I really got a tough, tough, intractable enemy, something like a dwarf golem, something I really want to get out of the way, uh, or if I'm fighting an enemy witch and they've got a dragon or something, then I'm really going to combine those, target the command value, boost my strike values, and try and take that thing out. So uh, that is a basic 350 point Witch Kingdom's army and the strategies I might deploy on the table. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.